Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope everyone's having a great morning so far. Um, here in lovely Southern California, the wind is kicking. So those Santa Anas are blowing in, and um, I hope everybody is just, you know, batting down the hatches and um, have a great day. So, hey, we're going to talk about essential oils today. Super big topic, very popular. Um, lots of, lots of uh, pregnant people want to know, is it safe to use essential oils? Can I use them throughout a pregnancy? Can I use them in my labor? Can I use them on my babies? And it is a massive topic. And I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'd like to leave all the um, super detailed information to an expert. So someone that is has studied aromatherapy. Um, I mean, I've been doing aromatherapy for about 21 years, um, but I certainly don't call myself an aromatherapist. Um, at one point, I might have maybe considered myself an aromatherapist. I did a lot of training uh, back when my first son was born, and that's over 21 years ago, and um, did big courses in this and studied with people from France and really learned a lot about aromatherapy and actually my first business I had was called Noah's Ark and it was um, aromatherapy rubs for kids because back 21 years ago we didn't have um, certain essential oil companies so I was importing my oils and I was making my own blends because it was expensive to buy that stuff um, back in the day when our kids were little and I wanted to use as much holistic stuff for my babies as possible so I used to use a lot of things um, and make a lot of blends, chest rubs and bath things and sleepy time things and all of that stuff. Um, and then um, and then I evolved into doing other things, but um, essential oils are really, really important. Um, there's so much information on there and they are not benign. They're not something that you just wanna play with necessarily and apply them to your body and use them all the time. I mean, they definitely have Health benefits for sure, um, and that is evidence-based. There's some research on the benefits of uh, lavender, frankincense. Um, those are some herbs, uh, some of the oils that we use regularly here at the birth center. We are not attached to any one particular essential oil company. We support um, pretty much anybody that's, for the most part, selling essential oils. Um, we don't. Um, we we encourage you to look at how they're sourced making sure that they're sustainably sourced and that you're getting um, a high quality product. So I know that there's doTERRA out there, pretty high quality product. There's Young Living, again, another pretty high quality product. Um, we use a lot of, if you see down here, we have lots of oils that we have around the birth center and all different kinds. So Snow Lotus is one that we really, really like. I use Snow Lotus actually um, on a regular basis. I use Snow Lotus, a certain blend uh, daily on my body for where I'm at in my life cycle. Um, I also have this muscle relief one that I use like pretty regularly on my neck. It's a Snow Lotus one. Um, then we have a fairly inexpensive lavender. Um, this lavender we use, um, we use this, we diffuse lavender in the birth center for some families when they're laboring. We will put it on washcloths and freeze them during the labor so that moms can have a nice, real cold washcloth with lavender on it. We have a more um, a highly sustainable, you know, Snow Lotus makes a good lavender, doTERRA, Young Living, Rocky Mountain Oils is the other one, and those are all really good sources. Or Acacia is readily available. That's the one that you could get at like Whole Foods and Sprouts. And it's fairly good, you know. Um, I'm not too familiar with how Oracacia resources their oils, um, but it's a fairly popular brand and it's cost effective. Um, and then again, we have this less expensive lavender for things that are not that, um, I'm not using that much of it. I'll put it on a washcloth and we're rinsing that washcloth throughout the labor, you know, keeping it cold on your forehead. Um, we also use lavender in a peri bottle, which is one of those little squirt bottles for after a baby's born, when mom gets up to go pee for the first time, we put 10 drops of lavender in our peri bottles with water. And that helps as a bit of an analgesic and it helps tissue heal. And so you spray that while you're peeing because sometimes those first couple of peas are, are burny and ouchy. So we do like to use lavender in that sense. Um, we use some clary sage. 
Um, not until a woman is laboring, or certainly at the very end of her pregnancy, because clary sage is used as a uterine stimulator. So um, for pregnancy, we don't recommend it until after 36 weeks, and you might diffuse it. Um, you could even put a drop in a carrier oil. So a carrier oil is something like um, coconut oil, uh, almond oil, olive oil, any kind of just benign food grade oil and then one or two drops of that essential oil. And then you can rub it in your hands, and um, depending on which oil you're using, you would then you know, vary how many drops of the oil you're using, and then you could apply it to your body if you're the pregnant person at a certain point in the pregnancy, and only certain oils. Um, so some of the oils that we feel are safe in your pregnancy, um, this is topical application or diffusing. We're not talking about ingesting. Not a big proponent of ingesting your oils. Um, we'll talk about how we apply them and which ones, but I'm gonna touch on ingesting. So lemon, for example. I was super into ingesting lemon there for a little while because I love lemon in my water. And I thought one day I was working and I had lemon oil and I didn't have any lemons. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna put a drop of lemon in my water. And um, really good for my liver, you know, lemon has lots of benefits. And I did that for, like I was probably drinking maybe two cups of lemon water a day. And I was doing that for a couple of days and suddenly I was getting like these really intense migraine headaches. And then I realized it was the lemon. So there were about, I think I looked it up, how many lemons are in one drop of lemon oil? And it's about... Um, I think they said like 45 to 75 is what I've read of, of lemons in a 15 mil bottle of lemon oil, right? That's a lot of lemons, man. So one drop of lemon is a huge number of lemons that you're actually ingesting. So we don't recommend ingesting any oils. That's kind of our stance on it. I mean, there are some instances where we might say something would be appropriate. I know that um, doTERRA makes an oil called Digest Zen. I don't know what the Young Living, young living uh, equivalent is or Rocky Mountain equivalent is, but I know that it's uh, called Digest Zen through doTERRA. That's kind of, you know, kind of a really interesting oil and it seems to work sometimes one drop of that mixed in something, um, preferably not just water. You might mix it in something else to help um, that's what they say anyway. Don't, don't necessarily put it in water because it's not the best way to absorb it. But in general, don't, don't be drinking, don't be eating your oils. That's our stance on it. Unless you are being prescribed from an aromatherapist that has got a wealth of knowledge under their belt, we would encourage you not to ingest it. Um, so applying it in pregnancy. So there are some that are pretty much go-to that we think are really safe. Lavender is one of them. It's lovely. It's great for relaxing, it really is. It's, it works quite well in reducing stress. So we say if you're gonna use lavender, um, you, um, put it in a carrier oil, maybe one or two drops in a carrier oil. You can get a nice massage with lavender. You can put it in your baths. We recommend a couple of drops of lavender oil mixed in some Epsom salts and throw that into your bath so it diffuses well in the bath, it's quite safe. Diffusing it in your diffusers, right? Quite nice. You can also um, pick lavender and dry it and, and get the herb and, and put it in little packets and you can rub it in your hands and make little satchels with it. Lavender is quite nice. A lot of people cook with lavender. They make teas with lavender. Teas are an actually, that's another way to get these um, the benefits of the essential oils in a pretty benign way. So if you have some, like I have rosemary all over in my front yard. So you can boil that rosemary, I wouldn't be ingesting it, but if you wanna have it maybe around the house and you don't have a diffuser, you can put some of these herbs into a pot, you know, chop them up, put them in a pot of water on your stove and just let them simmer in the, and the vapors release into the air and it's quite nice. So you don't have to go buy an expensive diffuser. If you have some good oils, you can put them in a spray bottle. Um, I think I just recommended this to one of my clients that has, uh, she's a teacher, and I asked, is it okay, can you diffuse oils for our teachers? Like, you know, if you have elementary school kids or um, certain, any, I don't know, any kind of kid, and you want a calming environment, are you allowed to diffuse in a classroom? And I'm, I'm not sure that you are, 
but I did say for her own personal space, she can put some lavender in a spray bottle, shake it up, spray it around her desk, and you know, get a little bit of lavender out there. Um, but again, I don't know if you're a teacher, if you're really allowed to do that. So, but in your home, you're certainly allowed to do that. So for pregnancy, lavender is quite safe and lovely. Frankincense is a really nice essential oil um, purported to help with sleep. I use frankincense almost on a daily basis. I use it in my um, face lotion. Um, I put a drop of it in my, in my serum that I use in the morning when I put it on my face. Um, so it's good for tissue integrity. Some women will make special blends for perineal support when they're having their baby and frankincense is one of the oils and lavender is one of the oils and if you bring those in or we can make oils for you here at the birth center because we have, like I said, a variety of oils. So we like frankincense, we like lavender. Those are really safe in pregnancy. Clary sage, not until the end of your pregnancy. It is a uterine stimulator. Um, some people like wintergreen, some people for headaches or um, peppermint. There are some cautions with peppermint. Eucalyptus is helpful, especially if you're, um, for some pregnant women, their mucosa, their, their sinuses get kind of inflamed and it's hard to breathe at night. So we say maybe diffuse something that will help open up those sinuses. Again, I know doTERRA makes a blend called Breathe, which is quite nice. I don't know what the Young Living version is. Um, and I know you can probably make that blend on your own as well. So Breathe is really nice. We tell moms sometimes put it on a cotton ball and just maybe sniff it before you go to bed and leave it nearby. So you can take a sniff at night when you wake up to go pee if you're having a hard time breathing. It's, it's quite nice. Um, but don't ingest it. Um, a lot of people are really into putting these things on their body um, or on their baby's bodies. I'm gonna touch on, always put it in the carrier oil. There is um, some oils, lavender I'm gonna talk about because it's so popular, that you could probably actually put on what's called neat, straight on your body without a carrier oil. For things like a sting bite, um, bee stings and bug bites. It's really good just neat on that bite because it helps take away some of the itch and the inflammation. And it's quite safe when there are mosquitoes around and you want to use something in your pregnancy, um, that would be something that you can use. Also, um, I always forget the name of that bug spray company, but the really popular one that makes DEET. Um, and during this Zika situation, if you're going to a place that has potential with um, mosquitoes. I used it when I was in Haiti. I forget what like the big guns chemical stuff is called. Um, but they also make a lemon eucalyptus uh, bug repellent and that has been approved through the CDC for um, effective for bug repellent and used in the Zika areas. So you want to make sure you're getting the right balance of that lemon eucalyptus but it is good to keep mosquitoes away and biting bugs away. And a little bit of neat lavender is, is helpful for bug bites. Um, so don't put this stuff on your babies unless you're really, you've done your homework, you really are well educated in oils. Um, you don't ever want to put an oil straight into the bathtub because oil and water don't mix, right? So say you put a drop of um, eucalyptus in the oil, in the bathtub, right? And if that eucalyptus gets straight on your skin, not so good. So mix it in some Epsom salts, like shake it up so it can stick to those salts and then throw them into the bath. It helps it diffuse better in the water. Lavender as well, right? Um, so don't put any of those oils straight on your body and certainly really use them with caution with your children, with your small babies. Um, don't put it in their mouths. Don't do anything like that. Um, in labor, you know, labor is an interesting time because you're so, um, your senses are so acute. Your sense of smell is really super acute when you're laboring. So. If we ever diffuse anything at our birth center, we always make it very, very mild and make sure that the mom is tolerating it well. So um, no heavy oils diffusing in your labor room, really, because the smell can be kind of intense and maybe you won't like it. But having it on a washcloth is helpful. Um, having it in a bowl of water is helpful. Um, a spray bottle is helpful. And lavender, again, is a really great laboring oil. Um, clary sage being diffused with frankincense, really good, earthy, relaxing. The clary sage can help stimulate some of those contractions. Both clary sage and frankincense kind of have a strong, earthy odor, and not everybody really likes them. So um, really in small amounts, maybe one drop to the diffuser, and you know, 
three or four drops of that lavender oil. So those are the some things that we have around here. Geranium is another really big one that we have. We have it through Oracacia, we have it through doTERRA, we have it through Snow Lotus. Um, geranium is a very popular oil that we diffuse a lot here at the birth center. It's a very calming, um, it's a very calming oil. Um, so that's just my little snippet on these oils. My, the big takeaway from today is there are certain ones you can use in pregnancy. Lavender is certainly a safe one. Frankincense is safe. Um, clary sage, not until your third trimester. If you are ingesting these, I would strongly encourage you to do your homework. Uh, we follow a doctor, her name is Aviva, A-V-I-V-A, Rom, R-O-M-M, -M, and she's got a podcast called Natural MD Radio, and they just did a full podcast on essential oils in labor, and she brought in a very accomplished aromatherapist um, and herbalist speaking on the safety of these oils, and so I encourage you to go look at it. She has it archived. Really great resource for information. Um... um yeah, so that's my takeaway on it. They are not benign. Don't be ingesting them. Diffuse them. Put them in spray bottles with water. Put them in your bath. Use them sparingly on your body. And uh, be cautious, very cautious when you're using them with your children. And remember, we want to find them when they're, ideally, they're sustainably sourced. It takes a lot of lavender to get lavender oil. It takes a lot of frankincense to get frankincense. Um, roses, I think I read it's like a hundred rose bushes to get one rose oil drop or something. Like, this is some serious stuff. I mean, there people are farming this stuff. It, it, the industry behind essential oils is really kind of fascinating. So um, use it sparingly. Be respectful of these plants and, and how much material and plant material is required to get your little 15 ounce, uh, 15 mil bottle of oil. Um, yeah, take it seriously, it's, it's important stuff. So making teas, so you can make chamomile tea. Chamomile is lovely, you can make chamomile tea and just smelling the chamomile from the, the tea cup is really helpful. You know, chamomile is very calming for your stomach, it's good for digestion. You can drink the chamomile, but the smelling of that chamomile is, is quite lovely. So there are other ways to be getting these oils besides applying them directly to your skin or ingesting them. Um, so I hope that's helpful. This is really broad strokes here on essential oils. Um, but we want you just to be aware that we love them. We use them all the time here at the birth center. We make our own blends here. Um, and most midwives do. Most midwives are very familiar with oils. Um, we don't ascribe to any one particular brand. We um, support a variety of oil companies and um, we encourage you to do your homework and just remember that when you're applying these things to your body, <clears throat> it's serious, you know, and you should know what you're doing. So we encourage you to look up information from aromatherapist, check out Aviva Ram and her podcast. Super helpful. I found it to be really, really enlightening. Um, <clears throat> and there you go. That's my two cents on essential oils. So I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy your week and uh, get outside, go for a walk, drink your water. Don't put any essential oils in it and uh, squeeze some lemon in it directly. That'll be good, but just don't put lemon drops in it. Okay. Thanks everybody. See you soon. Bye.